Hello people, I thought it was about time I did an update video. It's been a while and actually a lot has happened since my last one. So um, here we go, I'll start at the top and I will work my way down. Okay, first up is my Avaclaria Purple Peru, who is currently in pre-mold at the back. Not out obviously, cocooned itself in. So I'm hoping he's, I think he's penultimate, so he should be maturing now, next mold. So, oh, sorry, wrong torch. There you go, that's better. Right, <coughs> yeah, basically, yeah, he should mature next mold, so you can uh, go out and alone, or hopefully I can try and buy a adult female from someone, which would be a very nice breeding project. And here is one of my female diversities, and she is, I don't know, she hasn't eaten a lot for ages, and she's not thin, she's just fine, there's nothing wrong with her, she's just, I don't know, it's like she's in pre-mold, but she isn't, but yeah, there's nothing wrong with her, very bizarre, very bizarre, that one, this tank, nothing going in there, she's grown an orchid, and here is my other female diversities who has molted. She molted last week and she is now fed. Her web is down the back there. She's had two big juicy crickets in the last week. Again, not out sadly, but um, yes, there you go. That's that one. Down here, Georgina eating like a horse. She's been eating a lot lately. A hell of a lot. Don't know why, I don't know if she's do, starting to go into her pre molt cycle. Who knows? But she likes to, I know when she's hungry, because that plant gets thrown all over the place. And I know she's searching for crickets that normally hide under it. So if I know that plant's moved, I know she's looking for crickets, and it hasn't only moved, she's kind of tossed her and thrown her up against the side of the wall. Anyway, and Balfouri people, the adult female I bought from the BTS, she's moved in rather nicely, as you can see, webbed the heck, sorry about the reflection people, it's really bad, but webbed the heck out of everything, and now currently resides down there. <laughs> if I can just see if I can get a... Well, I'll go my... I don't know if you can see it down there in the hole. Might be able to see a leg. But yes, yeah, she's in pre mold So, but that's cool. Because my male is due to mold probably in the next couple of months. So, that should work out perfect timing, actually. But as you can see, she's truly made this place her own. There's her entrance to her burrow on the back there. And she obviously has this escape route. She excavated all of this earth out herself, completely covering the water bowl, hence the water down here. So I put a new water bowl in and put it at the back corner of that because she built all of this up as you can see to make it the same height as her entrance and I don't think there's an inch of that entire bark hole and back there that she doesn't know about it's beautiful though can't wait till she molds I hope this is a uh, this is a successful breeding project I love these I absolutely love this species Anyway, yeah, so she's cool. She's doing very well. Unlike one of my versicolors. I've kept a couple back slings and I saw this one wasn't doing too well in this tub. And yeah. What up? Let's go and have a look. Just get a bit of light. Let's see it's dead. I think it's dead now. I came on from work today. We go macro, one second. 
There you go. Bless her, she's or he. Yep. Weird because again a full abdomen was eating clearly. And then see? Then suddenly for no reason I've checked her over, she has no fungal anything. Just one of those Avic deaths, I think. Yes, I think. In fairness, though, when you have an egg sack of 270, you know some are going to die. But, um, yeah. There you go. But I have an experiment going, actually. I know people are probably going to shoot me down for this one. But I'll do another video just on this. But this is my versicolor colony. They're all siblings, I've never never separated them. And uh, they're all coexisting very happily together. As you can see. They're all webbed up together. All eating and all in pre-molt now actually. Check the size of their abdomens out, they're very fat. They've been eating uh, second and third crickets. And uh, all doing really, really well. But I decided to put them in this tub upside down. And in the base, I have some damp tissue. And the wood, all the features are completely off the ground. So there's no chance of any fungal, mildew, anything. And plus when they've fed and their boluses have dropped, just unscrew the bottom, replace the flooring, pop it back on, job done. But they're all they they're all going on really well. They all I've I've witnessed them sharing crickets, which I have a video of actually, I'll uh, I'll pop that up after one of these this video. And yeah, I'm really, really happy with it actually. I have a friend who's also uh, doing the same experiment, but he has 20 of the slings I sold him. So, uh, yes, so that should be interesting. But I will remind people that if I do say any cannibalism or any cruelty, I will be separating them. I have the tubs ready. So, it's just an experiment to see how long they can last really. I have had a friend who's grown I think he said eight eight or nine successfully to adulthood together. Siblings not introducing new you know things. Anyway. Yep, these are my separate ones. That's Inga. This is my nephews. My brother, his father didn't allow him to take it home, so I said he could pick a spider and he could keep it here. So that's our wins, that's called Inga, and my other nephews, where's his one, because he was May the 4th, he named him, he decided to call him Obi-Wan Kenobi, because it was Star Wars Day. Yep, and he's doing really well, so if he's watching this, they're both feeding and in pre molt which is nice. Glad to see them all coming along nicely. Again, this is another one, this is number one, because this was the first one I ever pulled out. And this one up here called Flash, because he was pretty damn fast actually. And he's just fed actually. If you can see the abdomen on him. Sorry for the poor lighting people, it's that time of the evening. There you go. As you can see big fat bums which is what we want. I want to get these to at least third, fourth instar so they'd be out of the uh, what I call the, the danger zone with uh, Avicularia just like that one there. They just die for no reason and I have no idea why. I don't think anybody does. But here we go, check this out. 
Mummy Versicolor has moved in. Oh yes, Mother Versicolor has finally moved in. Look at what she did. This is the first web she has ever done for me that doesn't involve being stuck to the door. It's a miracle. She started this one on the door and I thought, oh God, please, no, not again. Every time I got a feeder and give her maintenance, it's a nightmare. But now, even though she's not in it, she's tucked away in the back there in the heat mat, she has finally built the web I wanted her to build right down in the tunnel. It's huge. Absolutely massive. She did a great job. Great job on that. I got it. So that's very cool. I'm very happy with that. And she's eating really well, as you can see. She's looking very healthy and ferocious appetite once again. Right then, go macro one sec. Here are my P Metallicas. I think this is my male. In fact, I'm almost positive this is my male. And he is doing very well. Very, very well, in fact. Eating a lot, growing rather fast. Got it, he's a male, if I'm honest. I was hoping for a female. But, um, need to get that molt out. But every time I go and grab it, he almost flies at the top. So, I will grab it out. He molted about a week ago, so that really does need to come out. And in here is my, what I'm hoping, is a female. Female And the reason I'm thinking this is female, I haven't been able to get, get to her and sex her yet because she munches her molts, but she has a completely different growth rate to this guy completely different. She's a good few months behind now on her molts and I feed them at the same time on the same day in the same size meals. So that's hopefully very cool. And next up is my if both is saying this my blue fang. Bear with me one second. I don't know if you can see down there, but yeah, built a massive tunnel all the way to the bottom of the jar and molted last week and did not mature. And that was the ninth mold in my care. So I'm hoping that this very well may be a female. Again, I haven't been able to uh, sex this because when he, she, hopefully she, moulds. The mould is so far down the barrow, I just can't get down there. Even with my surgical tweezers, I just can't get around the bend and grab it. So, we shall see. But, uh, yeah, that's exciting. If that's the case, then I'll definitely be breeding this species. So, uh, yes, very cool. As you can see, it's just a big pot of earth. All the way down and around the back. Don't you can see it? No. Anyway, right. Next up is my male Embalfori, that you saw the the um, transfer video of, and he is settled in. Very nice too. And he will definitely, I think he is definitely penultimate now. So he will be paired with my female. As you can see he's moved in. Webbed up, great web as these. And uh, yeah, dug his way through. Made it his own. Yes. And last but not least, well hopefully not, is my... Let's see if we can get in there actually. I've got to watch with this BC. This is my Aridopalma City. Just see the bum off. There she is, the bum sticking out the top there.
and she's doing really well. I'm currently looking for a male because she is now mature. So if you do have a male and you're living in the UK, get in touch. I'll be happy to go 50-50 or buy him off you because I love this species. And as slings, they are stunning. Absolutely stunning. Oh, now before he's on the move. Yes. Yes. But that is my update, people. I'm very happy about my mother's verse colours settling in. That's so good. I was a bit worried about her when she wasn't webbing up and uh, just acting a little strange. But strange thing for a versi though, look. She's covered the bark with earth to camouflage it. Very salmopoeus rather than avocleria. But um, I do tend to have natural light come into this room. I do like them to know when it's day and night. I think it's important, especially with breeding, because my versicolor, since I've been given her day and night in in the room, she does tend to, she's quite seasonal. She lays egg sacs every, I suppose, every spring. And I think that's helped with my breeding project. So, um, yeah, but God, look at that. That's one hell of a size of It's a lot of web. No wonder she was hungry. I must have taken a lot of energy. Yes. And, um... That's that, really. Uh, more videos coming soon. I'm going to do another video on my... First Colour Colony. And... Some other bits. Okay, cheers people.